All right, let's get on to prospect number three, old Equinemius St. Brown. No, this isn't a P and Keel <laughs> skit <laughs> here. Key and Peel. Yo, so this is what equin- Equinemius stands for, a form of equanimity, meaning to stay calm and cool under pressure. I like yeah, that. I like that. He looks he looks calm and cool, judging by his photograph here and his <laughs> play on the field. Usually stays pretty calm. It's true. Seems pretty calm and cool in his interviews, combine and post combine. Sure, he's a he's six five two fourteen, which is above the playing weight that he m- played with in sixteen a and probably more. seventeen no for doubt. sure. No doubt. Those the, pipes the, on the combine workout. The pipes looked beefed up a little. Absolutely. Twenty bench press reps. His no da- way he got twenty bench press. His reps. dad is was a Mister Universe, so runs in the family and mm-hmm. a fashion designer and a fashion designer. If that's what you're into. He speaks several different languages, which apparently NFL teams are, are skeptical about. Wait, you don't you only you don't only speak NFL football? Like they're mad if you have anything going on besides football. Yeah, can't really? have any distractions. Yeah. Skeptical about that? Yeah, they want. Meanwhile, to they're over here worried about Wonderlicks and stuff. And this cat can speak multiple languages. His dad. Right. He's got a caring father. Does have a caring father. Got him prepped for this combine. Twenty bench press reps. Got got him on a weight training. Hopefully, he doesn't have a PED test coming up. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime soon, but it's probably good to go. Well, I'll he, take one. He crushed. Uh, he crushed the forty four four eight with the six five man at at, at two fourteen two fifteen is fantastic, Strong. and it's evident on the game tape of how fast he is. Very oh, fast. Starting off with probably the knock on this guy is that he is big framed and 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 uh, but doesn't really play above the rim. The the box out from this guy and the and the low post game, if we're going to equate it to basketball, sure. probably isn't the strongest. Yeah, you, for a big man, you don't really see him winning too, too much in the air. You don't see him Contested. battle yeah. for the ball. He doesn't seem like he has that aggressive, this is my ball mentality. It's more of, I'm 6'5", it'll get to me, and then I'll catch but it. But to the other, to to go the other way, like he's very quick and fast. So like he doesn't rely on, on having to box people out. His it's athleticism his is better than most guys that are his size. Absolutely. So It's very fair. He's very quick and fast, so he, he never had to figure out that part of his game and he was a little bit when you watch 16 a little skinnier yeah no doubt well that's that's the thing for me is you're like seeing you're, a bigger 17 you're for, bigger at the combine to, so. to, to to get his best football tape you have to look in 2016 when Deshaun Kaiser was throwing him the ball not in 2017 with new quarterbacks so when you look with at a new a little bit less air whole new court, coaching all, staff and attempts everything. and catches for everything was way down right 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 yeah not only not only new kind of offense and it, a slow it down type scheme the per, if you're gonna knock Deion Kane for his production in his in his year as the man you got to knock Equinemius here with 33 catches well here here's what I'm saying though like I mean uh, I'll get back we'll get back to your point here in a second you can knock Deion Kane a little bit but es esb was always the guy who was the last two years led his team in receptions y- almost every category yeah so the college dominators must be high I, I have no idea but like there just wasn't a ton of volume regardless of how you would look look around but in 16 when with the vo- with the volume with kane there was tons there was still a decent amount of volume in 17 with kane esb still was the leader in receptions in both years he led pretty much every category, 17 volume drop off, but still leads pretty much every receiving stat, um, except for average and TDs by one. He got edged out by one touchdown. And uh, Kevin Stevenson averaged more yards per catch in 16 and 17 in the, in, than him, but those are pretty much the only categories that he didn't dominate yeah. uh, for. his. There's just a lot lower volume to go around. Yeah, much less potent offense running around in Notre Dame than it is over right. there in Clemson, no doubt about it. And the reason, I, you know, the reason obviously – bring up the Deshaun Kaiser because at least he would you know got drafted and went and played NFL football last year so that's what you know you bring you go back to 16 to look for better tape just like you go back to 16 and you find better tape on Kane because Deshaun Watson's dropping dimes at least Kaiser's slinging it to ESP and giving him chances to rack up some stats but you know it, it's it's the ESB in 2016 tape, like you mentioned, is not. It's no secret for anybody that's watched any of it. But if you haven't, and you're relying on some information from us, he is a lot skinnier in 2016 than what he shows up as in the the combine and the uh, post interview combines and stuff like that. The videos and stuff they put up on NFL.com. The arms on this fella are completely different than what they were 18 months ago or so. So he's definitely been working out with his pops or whoever with the team. All of the above. Yeah. Um, so he's, but like you, to but that, to but that to get, point, but to that point, like you said, he's, he's, he's quicker 
than most people his size. He's more agile than most people with a six foot five, and he hasn't had to have the be- to be it. He hasn't had to, to develop to, a low post to, game to to get open and be open and right. be productive. But so now maybe there's potential for that development because now he's got some guns on that six five frame where he's there filling was, out a little. How can you develop a low post game when you need to be out on the wing shooting jumpers because you don't need to be down? <laughs> right, po- you're Kevin Durant. Right, you catch an elbow LeBron down James. low and you're falling down. So yeah. now that he's going to grow into his six foot five. Maybe there's a little bit more banging in his future to go along with some of that agility. And Jay Wayne just pulled up looking for some dominators and stuff. And I see 36 percentile player profiler that says the best comparable is Tyrell Williams. And I hadn't seen that. It's funny because that's it. He looks obviously it's an easy comparable because they're both like six four, six five, and just over two hundred pounds. But and Tyrell doesn't really go up in the air. Either but no, he does not. He does not do that well. But he is like looks like a gazelle Fast. on those crossing yeah. routes. And when you get him in space and he catches the ball, he's very right. hard to tackle. Even though he's not a tackle breaker, he's just right. hard to catch tackle up breaker. with, and he's very elusive because he's just he's like a gazelle, and nobody can really get close to him. Right. And you mentioned the crossing route. I mean, this dude, Equinemius, crushes a crossing he route. He sure does. He's super slippery in the open field. He's got that long speed. He's a long strider. Um, it's just that's probably one of the best aspects of his game is after the catch. Yeah, he's got he's got a good after the catch uh, part of his game. I just it's not so much like a like a Christian Kirk. I'm gonna stiff arm you in the face, kind of. No, after but the for catch. being it's so just, big and tall and fast, like he's, and, he's and I maneuverable. Like, yeah, exactly. and I think I think I do think he's hard to wrangle in the open field once he's once he's going. He's tough to bring down. I, you know, I think more wiry, uh, right? And uh, what, but the biggest thing again to me is like you see this big guy, his get off the ball is so fast for how big he is. It's explosive. And he's just. It's just a, a a bigger kind of faster guy, and if he can develop in maybe into this body a little bit and gain a little bit of a, a low post game and be a little more nasty in in a kind of one on one, I'm going to post you up and and just go jump for the ball kind of deal. He he could really be a huge problem and, and be the best player in this draft. Absolutely, like if you can couple that speed with with the big man game that he could learn, that's a teachable asset. You can't teach being six five exactly, but you could teach somebody how to low post and body somebody. But you also can't teach how fast he is. It's just crazy when he gets his his get off the ball is just when you watch all the other big receivers. It's nowhere close exactly. to what he's has. You can that's that's what that's well said. I love how you brought all that together because you can't teach things that he has. And you can't teach what he's growing into. You know, you can teach a work ethic and you can teach a go get in the gym, but you can't teach that frame. He's got the super long arms or 33 inches, but he just, he doesn't use them like he could. You know, if, maybe he can develop that part of his game. Those and are some huge arms. Right. Really long. Um, but, and, and then let's take it to the hands here because there's, I, w- I wanted to come in here and knock him for his hands. You see a lot of body catches. Like, it's a lot of times that body, ball gets on his body. But there's not a ton of drops, and you do see a fair amount of hands catching to go on. And when you're that big and fast and tall and strong, I guess you just take the gamble here. You just, you just, you just, just, That's what you're banking on is the big, tall, fast, strong yeah. part. I mean, yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I could bring up like Justin Hunter and Odell sure. Green Beckham, I mean, the, but the, the list goes on and on and on. Yeah, the guys yeah. those two are, guys are completely opposite of this dude's personality and 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 what he's going his maturity level. Well, I, and you and, know and what some I mean? people, there's this reports out there that he does, you know, maybe he's just kind of nonchalant about the game. Maybe he doesn't love it that much. Rather be studying another maybe language. He's got options. He can see yeah, he's bilingual, trilingual, maybe, and yeah. he's he's an artist. Apparently, but they did they they these, had fun. These kind of reasons are reasons that he's not up at the top and. You know, I just he's a guy who could possibly potentially at the end of the day end up as being one of the best receivers from this class. But instead, I'm probably taking him at more of a seven or eight approach here. Like I probably have I have him ahead of Deion Kane for the reason that I do believe that he, ESB, if, if things break right for him, could be a centerpiece and could be somebody's number one. So I'm going to take the chance on him still taking Kirk and Anthony Miller over top of him because I believe in those guys game. All scar doesn't like that. She wants Equinemius. She's an Equinemius gal. She wants him to come to KC. <laughs> she said, we'll just move, move him in on the other side of uh, Sammy Watkins there and target him up. Scarlet's the dog in the background, but back to Equinemius and, and the reason that I'm going Kirk and, and maybe a- and Anthony Miller over Equinemius for me personally, I, again, I don't want to kill it, but I feel pretty safe on drafting Kirk. And I feel pretty safe on drafting Anthony Miller. Equinemius, there's a little bit more of questions in my mind and and all those kind of things of, you know, what he's going to be and how much he 
wants to be and what he's going to develop into and all that kind of stuff. When I know I feel pretty good about those guys. And, you know, at some point in drafts, I'm fine with taking the risk and, and taking the upside in the Dion Kane. But at some point I'm going to, you know, especially early on when I'm in that kind of five, six range of receivers and I might need one, I'm going to probably err on the side of caution. Right. But you do acknowledge the upper top end potential of a, of a, Equinemia sure. St. Brown here of what he could pretend, like when he grows into that frame and he if he does focus in on if he beside you know focusing in on being a professional wide receiver versus other options that he may have in his life because he's a well-rounded man I'm right. not gonna hold that against him but I sure. understand what you're saying and so the fact that you acknowledge what the top end could be but I, I get yeah the, I said earlier he could be the top one right. or two in this class, easy. Right, I, I, I get a focal point. I get the, I get the Christian Kirk and and you know the the safety there and ESB to me, uh, he's going to be very very EQ. Uh, E, we're, we're going, going EQ. EQ. I, I've said ESP a bunch of times, but yeah. I like I like, e, I like EQ better. I like EQ too. All right, so I can sw- I can switch it over. So it fits the fashion designing part of his life. <laughs> yeah, ESB sounds like a beer. <laughs> right, right. This is true. Oh well, I'll, it's definitely I'll, more of a I'll wine the guy. IPA or the ESP. So hmm. t- to me, EQ is going to be one of those guys. I mean, I I, I can't EQ. agree. EQ, my bad. <laughs> EQ, I'm gonna take him over Dion Kane. In yeah, me draft. too. Okay, I got him firmly planted at seven. I think behind Kirk and Miller for me, I'm going ESB at seven. I in like my, it. In, obviously, I haven't done Shark, and there's a couple of Hamilton and and uh, Traquan, Traquan Smith. Smith, and that you know, I'm, we're at basically ten guys we've looked at. Uh, I know it's getting a little late in the process here, and we haven't been through them all. So right now, out of the ten guys I've gone through, he's firmly at seven for me. Yeah. Well, I I think for for me, I'm I will be able to to I want if I'm going to draft a rookie wide receiver because you guys know that I firmly do not like to do that. I will I will take a shot on on the old EQ because of the home. I'm going to take the home run cut on this guy for the absolute potential upside of the potential elite receiver that he could be. So you're saying you're taking him over Kirk? Or Anthony Miller? No, no, I'm, no. But like first the, out of the next group, right. I, I yeah, agree. Yeah. I yeah, agree yeah, with yeah, the yeah, safety yeah. factor of the Anthony Miller and and the Christian Kirk for sure. So I, I to me right now, if I had to, if I was on the clock and I had to really go after it, I, I, I'm gonna go Christian Kirk, Anthony Miller, and then to me, I'm gonna go EQ next in the wide receivers because this take out all the other different safeties and all that you know safety yeah. versus home run cut. I'm gonna gamble here. There's that I'm I'm taking EQ next after those guys. All right. Well, Jay Wayne, close up shop where you got him, and let's we'll we'll get on to Dante Pettis to close the uh, show out. If I have to be honest, I think I got to take Deion. Of course you do. But that's oh, that's he's a homer. Just, I'm a homer. Uh, I would probably At least have you're to, being honest about it. I probably have to advise. To I probably have to advise you to take Equinemius. Okay. Last year, early in the process, I was like. To be honest, I'm going to take Mike Williams over Corey Davis. When it came down to it and I was on the clock, I took Corey Davis. Yeah, but uh, you did advise everybody else listening at home to not do right, that. And you I said, did. I'm going to advise you to take Corey, Corey Davis, Davis I'm but I'm going to take Mike Williams. And you did not do that on the clock. Right. I did trade back into the first round to get Mike, <laughs> Mike Williams when he, when he fell. Yeah, but uh, I got two draft picks in the first this year. <laughs> I know where the heartstrings are. Yeah, <laughs> he got me. That's the problem. That's why we don't play in very many other. leagues together. We got to keep it to a minimum. I know. It's funny. All right, well, that'll do it for Dion Kane. Let's go ahead and take a quick break, and we'll be back with Dante Pettis. For your pleasure. 